Hey guys, Kev here, and I wanted to <clears throat> do a skiff bearing swap on the new Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger Jack. Now, I want to um, preface this video by saying I am dumb, <clears throat> and this is not necessary. So, if you out there have a Gunslinger Jack and you're wondering, should I swap to skiffs? If your knife is like this one, currently i would just not do it because you're just risking you know stripping a screw or screwing something up maybe losing the amazing acoustics that you get with this knife out of the box but because i'm here for you guys <laughs> because i know some of you guys are gonna want to know i'm gonna do it i'm just kidding i uh am extremely curious what will happen so i want to do it now i believe uh Jack Wolf Knives is selling the skiff bearings on their website. I don't know how many they have. I know there's a lot more knives than skiff bearings. So if you want to set, hit up Ben. I'm not sure if skiff will be selling them as well. I actually um, randomly have a set. So <clears throat> let me grab these out. Pretty sure these are the right size. Um, about four months ago, five months ago, I got a left-handed custom shamwari on bearings and they take tiny little bearings. And I had just gotten bearings from Skiff in 364th ball, which is, uh, sort of a middle size between one millimeter and one sixteenth. And a lot of OEMs are using it and we could not figure out why Skiffs wouldn't work in some of these knives. Well, this was the missing link, the 364th ball. And so he made me, <clears throat> he made a uh, five millimeter 364ths for our Devo Growler model. And it also fits a million other things now. <clears throat> and uh, when I got the sham, I asked him if he could make these little ones. And um, this is a one eighth inch pivot. It's basically the smallest pivot you can get. And then you have 364th ball. And uh oddly enough he was like yeah sure and he sent me a couple test sets which i promptly sent one set to my buddy zach another lefty who i had sold the shamwari to in the meantime and i kept this set and i never used it because i i just don't have knives that with that small of bearings or whatever so when ben launched this knife and said he got skiffs made for it i was like oh that's probably why he was like sure here's some test sets because <laughs> ben was having a bunch made um so let me just show you what i mean if i take these out you'll see here they are tiny as shit and it will not fit in this one millimeter slot but it will drop into the 364th slot. So that is the size of the ball. And then the pivot, I don't I don't have the pivot apart. We'll show you in a second. But you can see if I slide this over the 1 8th pivot, it basically fits perfectly. And if I put it over the 4 millimeter, it's going to be too big. That's the DHL guy dropping off my um, screw. So we don't need to answer that. Um, all right. So yeah, that's the bearing. Sorry. I was getting distracted there. I'm going to put these back in for now. And, uh, before I take it apart, we might as well talk about it a little bit just so in case I screw it up. Um, <laughs> this is the sharpshooter Jack. Absolutely fantastic. This is the first release from Ben and you'll see the gunslinger is a scaled up version of the sharpshooter. And then it has a long pull on it and obviously a lock and all that stuff. But you'll see, this is why Ben didn't add lock bar access cut out here that I would like because he wanted to keep those traditional lines. And, you know, it's not bad. It's not like you can't disengage it. It's just um, you have to kind of get in there and do it this way. Right. And if you're left handed, you can do it this way. He added a nice touch on here where he put this gap in here. So when you push this as a lefty over like this, you don't get pinched because that's what happens when you use a bolster lock left-handed a lot of times. So it's pretty cool that he did that. A lot of cool little things on this knife. Um, my biggest gripe with this knife, honestly, is there's no filler tab. 
and I'll probably keep bitching about it, but I know why he did it, because aesthetically, keeps that line, looks really nice. But man, that filler tab would have just been perfect right here, and then, because um, they include it in the box. I'm not going to show you today, because I don't want a clipless knife, but yeah, I just wish it was lefty. That would be sick. Um, it works fantastically, left-handed and right-handed, but uh show you one last little comparison here. This is obviously a slip joint. Close it up. You guys can see them top to bottom like this. So that's the difference right there. So you have small and basically large, but it's more like a normal size knife. You know what I mean? It's not big or anything. Uh, action is wonderful. This one has a really good detent. Pops with the front flipper tab. Reverse flick is excellent. I've actually learned to uh, thumb flick it, but mostly when I'm standing. There you go. Just be careful with that because if you flick and don't get it and slide down like this, these blades are not fucking around. Um, I've had the occasional lock stick, but not like lock stick. I think what's happening is occasionally I flick, and as I'm flicking, I'm pushing on the lock bar, and it's pushing that lock bar over because it gives like a click, right? But normally, if I just don't touch the lock bar, there's absolutely no stick at all. So pretty sure that's just me being uh, handsy on it. Listen to this. I don't know if that comes through. It even does it when you disengage sometimes. It's crazy. Um, it's because of this super deep full hollow grind. Um, now I'm a little concerned that the acoustics will disappear when I take it apart because that does tend to happen with knives sometimes. Um, but we're going to find out. So yeah, here's what I'm going to recommend to anybody who's going to take this knife apart. Because, because I have taken apart Jack Wolf's before and I know that he uses uh, hardware similar to Pena the tooling is rather shallow honestly and i slip out of it all the time and then you scratch it up you don't necessarily strip it but you just like scratch it and shit so what i'm gonna do is recommend that you use fresh bits so i'm gonna grab two t10s because we have a spinning pivot we might need that we might also need our skiff tool which is what i'm gonna start calling it because he didn't like the name finger bit, I guess. So we're going to call it the skiff tool. We're going to take a T8 because I think we need a T8. And then I actually just refreshed my T6s. So the T6s are fresh and good to go. I'm going to grab two drivers. And I'm going to grab the finger bit. Which is right here. Which actually has a T6 in it. But that's not what I need, is it? So let me put that in here, T10. We'll see if we need it, but there we go. This thing is awesome. All right, are we prepared? I think we are, I'm gonna grab a cloth and alcohol and we're gonna get rolling folks. So first things first, T10 on the pivot. I guess we could remove these first, but I like to just make sure I actually get the knife apart. I usually try to come apart from this side. I don't think the clip mounts like through there. I think the clip is just mounted from this scale in and I'm not gonna remove it. So I don't really think I need to, there's no screw going through. So I should be able to take it apart from this side. I prefer to lift the lock off. That's kind of how I like to do it. But you could do it either way. I guess we're just gonna see what loosens out, right? So again, you're gonna want Direct pressure forward. Be very careful because um, if you slip out, I'll show you what can happen. If you slip out of that, because this titanium has this amazing aluminum oxide finish, it's going to look gnarly if you scratch the shit out of it. That's what happened here. I slipped. I even had a cloth covering... Um, and it went right through that. So just be careful. That's the feel good. Love that knife. So let me just shut up and start taking it apart. 
So I just put finger pressure over here and I think that was enough to break the Loctite. So keep that pressure forward. I don't know. It looks like I unscrewed that side. Okay. That's what happens sometimes. It just pushes out. So I actually was not loosening this. So let me just open it and pop it in. There we go. Now it's all the way back in. So sometimes the knife will tell you which way it wants to come apart. And this knife wants to come apart from this side. So there you go. These, I believe, are T8. So let's grab our T8. I'm using, obviously, Weehaws. These are audacious concept drivers. Everything I can link is down in the description under my disassembly tools. So this one is the screw that I strip the most. You just need to put forward pressure, gentle. Maybe I'm just getting better at it, but there we go. Pull that out, put that over here. I might actually leave it in the scale once I get it. Forward pressure. I have usually the most difficult time when I'm taking it, putting it together because you have to get it tight and then, you know, as you get tighter, you'll slip out. But honestly, the tooling seems better. Like, look at that. It's stuck to my bit. So maybe I just needed fresh bits, you know? So I got fresh T8s, fresh T10s, and I'm not having a problem here. So uh, I might have to just say that I was using shitty bits before. Okay. So let's swap out for a T6. I could grab another driver, but I don't need to go crazy. So these are T6s under here. Direct straight pressure. And then you just wait till it clicks and then it should come out. When it clicks, that means it hit the top of the thread or the end of the thread. It's just kind of stuck in there. It's all I don't really need it to come out, honestly. So I'm just gonna oh, there we go. Put that there. Boop. Sticky fingers. Sometimes, even after I wash my hands, I go to put my contacts in and, like, they're fucking sticking to my fingers. It's so annoying. Why do I have sticky fingers? Don't answer that. All right, so now we have this, and we'll see if it comes off. Yep. Don't need a pry or anything. But if you do, just use some kind of plastic pry. Here's our titanium slab for one side. We have our uh, steel washer, a.k.a. thrust bearing. And uh, I may flip that over. We'll see. I got to clean them first and see. Here's the bearing. So this OEM, which we don't know, still don't know who the OEM is. I really want to know, but whatever. Um, here's the pivot. Tiny little bugger. And there's our other bearing. And we can take, take our magnet, get that washer out, drop that bitch down. Stop pin comes out nicely. Backspacer should just lift off. So here's the thing. I don't know why you'd need to take this off right now. You can get to the clip screw through here. So if you wanted to swap that for that insert, you just go in there with what looks like a T8 and then remove this, put the other one on. So you don't even need to remove the backspacer. If you do want to remove the backspacer, you'll see that it's not just coming off. What you have to do is take off the clip take off this scale right here and then you're going to want to loosen those two t6s under here and that's going to free this up it's just bound down by the barrels in there or the screws so that's just kind of how it goes looks like there's a pen as well keeping everything nice and tight which is very important um because that's what keeps the acoustics from getting wonky, is having really tight tolerance like that. And he did a great job with that. This is number 648. That's pretty damn cool to see right there. Um, yeah, they didn't number everything. Oh, wait. Interesting. This says 647. Yeah. 647. What happened to my knife? My knife jumped a, a slot. Put this back. I'll ask Ben about that. That's interesting. Because this is backspacer number 648. But it's on knife 647. Or I guess those scales are 647. They don't mark the blades, I don't think. There's nowhere really good to do that. One thing I noticed, I was talking to Ben about this. This is all stonewashed. So they don't have this belt satin, which is nice because it'll help you wear that track in quicker for the detent, which does take a little bit of time. So you just need to, you know, 
be patient because it is a little scratchy at first. And I recommend you just use some KPL Heavy or Nano 85 and you'll be good to go. So let me just, I might need to scrap this cloth because I got super glue on it. So I'm going to clean this insert off. It's got, you know, KPL and whatnot on it. And then I'm going to thoroughly clean my lock bar. This is very important so that you can um, negate any potential lock stick when you put it back together, just clean that off really well. Clean the blade off. Yeah, this thing weighs nothing. Clean the lock tang or lock face, whatever you want to call that thing. Um, and then I always take a little Q-tip, take a little bit of alcohol, clean out that detent hole. There could be machine stuff in there. It doesn't look like there's anything in here. They look like they keep it really clean. It kind of reminds me of Riot. It also reminds me of Kaiser because Kaiser does not really oil shit. Um, I've noticed when I take apart their knives, they're bone dry, which some people like because you don't have all this goop in there like QSP. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want some oil in there because you want it to be smooth and shit. And that's one downside to not having it oiled from factory. It might feel a little more gritty at first, and people just have to oil it. Okay, I'm going to do a quick check on this right here. Looks like a T8, so I'm going to swap back to a T8. I'm just going to make sure this insert screw is tight. I'm guessing it's tight. Ah, see, that's what I'm worried about. I didn't really slip out, but that's what I'm talking about. It's just, like, weird sometimes. Some of these screws are... Because they have this, like, star shape to them. I don't know. It's, like, uh, just odd compared to other stuff. Like, here's a screw. This is from Riot. It's more like... You drop in, Right? You drop into that screw um, where it feels more like on these you kind of are just you just barely pop in so I know that's something he's working on I think to get um, deeper tooling so anyway um, as we can see he did say this was a spinning uh, pivot in a sense it is it is a spinning pivot because there's no D shape or anything but it's not a spinning pivot in the sense that both sides are loose. So it doesn't seem like this side would unscrew easily. Like it looks like it's kind of welded on. Let's see if I can zoom in. Looks like it's kind of welded on to this barrel. You see that? There's no like unscrewing this. So it is a spinning barrel system but it doesn't have the issue where both sides come out and shit like that, at least as far as I can tell. All right, so let me shut up. Cleaned everything. I know we haven't. We have to clean the uh, bearings and the washers. So the reason I'm thinking about flipping over the washers is so the skiff bearings can work a fresh track. It's usually how I like to do it. Depends on the knife, we'll see. Sometimes it just doesn't seem like it'll work because like one side's flat. Here's the stop pin. I'll clean these bearings anyway. I don't plan to use them. Um, but they seem dry. So even just lubricating this, I think, would probably go a long way, if, even if you don't swap the bearings. But here, I'm going to show you why I like to swap bearings. So on this bearing right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls, okay? On this bearing right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten balls. So that's why I like skips because you get more balls and it's ceramic. So you're getting more surface area, more contact, right? Um, and that means it's going to be smoother. You're not going to have any hitches or, or whatever. Now, these are fine. I'm not going to sit here and say there's anything wrong with these. The knife was fantastic in stock form. I'm just saying that's why some of us are weird and want skiff bearings. Um, more surface contact, which means you're going to get better lateral strength, which 
stock. This knife is phenomenal in that category. There was no play at all, which I was surprised with a small pivot and bearings, but he has a lot of a good amount of meat inside the handle, which is nice. Um, but yeah, you get it. Um, more lateral strength, and then it's just a little smoother because you have more balls. It doesn't mean it's going to be more drop shut. Now, you might be able to tighten it and have no play, but get a little more better action. So, in a sense, you kind of get more drop shut, but it's not always the case, and that's not the reason I put skips in a knife. So, again, I'll just show you both. Sorry, I'm being very instructional today. And there you go. You can see the difference clearly. So if you have the 12 bucks and want to do it, I think it's worthy cause. So I'm going to grab my KPL and I'm going to grab a Q-tip and I'm going to start working here and hope that I get this back together with some tings and whatnot. And if not, I'm probably just going to buy another one. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting KPL on the uh, pivot barrel to help the blade to fall better, um, to just rotate a little smoother, right? I did not clean it out. So in this case, because it's so tiny, I'm actually going to try to use a Q-tip, one of these little guys, put a little alcohol on it. Highly recommend this spray bottle of alcohol. I'm just going to try to get that puppy in here carefully because I don't want to lose the head of it. It's probably what's going to happen. Gently. Oh, nice. Oh, that's sweet, dude. You can just clean in here with these. That's so cool. Yeah, that's sweet. Because you can't, like, I'm thinking, how can I get, how can I get a cloth in there, right? It's going to be hard to drive that in. Even with a T6, it barely went in, right? Nice. Got a little bit of that stuff out, though. So make sure you're careful with that. All right. So that was alcohol. This is kpl let me just do a little more a little thicker there we go all right so that puppy is going to go in here okay i'm going to take my stop pin uh these little magnet pens are really nice too you can get them on amazon they're linked down below dude they're dirt cheap like i'm talking a couple bucks um but makes it easy to pick stuff up Let's see if i can Yep, got it in. See, pretty sweet. Um, washers. So let's see how we want to do this. So you can see that on this side, there's a race already from the stock bearings. So if my skiffs don't have the same path, it could cause issues. But I'm not really loving this side. It's a little bit, you know... Now, the skiffs would clean it up, probably, so might be worth a shot. I'm also wondering if the skiffs would just run on the same path. There's not much space here, so I feel like they're going to be about the same. Let me just stack them and see. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and risk it. And just put them in the way they were because I just think it it's a better side. So I'm just going to put some KPL on the back here so that it sticks down in there. Drop that bad boy on. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to run some KPL in here on the back here. And then put it in. And there we go. Got those in. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of KPL Heavy just to get this started. And you'll see, here's your detent track. It's still wearing a path. Like, it hasn't broken in all the way yet. So I don't think they pre-put in these paths. So it has to make the path. So your knife might be a little gritty at first. That's not the bearings. That's this ceramic ball trying to break a path in here. And it takes time. Once it's broken in, it'll be smooth as butter. It's ceramic and, and hardened steel. You know what I mean? So just give it time. Use KPL Heavy like this. And that'll uh, make it a little smoother as it breaks in. And then you'll have, um, you'll have a better time doing that. 
I think that's a good amount. All right, and then I'm gonna take my skiffs and I'm going to put some oil on my fingers. I don't need a lot because they are small. Rub it around in my finger, swip, uh, flip it over, rub it around, drop it on the pivot. Take the other one as I bring my blade over here and drop it on. <laughs> Such a small pivot. It's great. All right. I'm going to push down a little bit. This is why I don't like assembling from this side. Because now the lock bar wants to push the blade up. And I'm going to have a pain in the ass time trying to get the bearing to sit on there. So uh, I'm going to clean my fingers here. I'm going to push down. I'm going to lock it in place because the stop pin's in. So no worries there. And now I'm going to hope it just stays enough okay all right everything else is good right it's a little water flip this over and pop this down Let's see let's try There we go. There we go. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I haven't cleaned this yet, but I'm gonna clean it before I, well, let me just give it a little. So far, every part has been immaculately clean, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that didn't have a bunch of schmutz on it. Just going to start threading that. Trying to avoid using my tool just because my angle is not great right now. There we go. All right, I don't want to over tighten it. I just want to get it in there. And then I need my T6s. I'm gonna start down here. So, and I got to switch. Wait for the click, and then you know. This is where I struggle with these screws, because when you go tight, that's when you can slip out, because it's like, just good downward pressure, that's enough tension. The centering was slightly off um, on the knife, so I'm thinking it might still be slightly off when we're done. I was hoping the skips would fix it, but we haven't fully assembled it yet either and check the pivot tightness so to be determined we'll see and we got those tightened right and we just need to slide this on drop that in now we need to switch to the t8 is this a 10 no it's an 8 are those T6? Oh, shit. Oh, no. See? Yeah, they're just very... I'm going to show up about it. Okay. So, I'm just going to be careful. Try to just get it tight enough. Okay. Alright. So, you see we're off center, but let's just... We still have, we have a little bit of play. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was nice, but we're not tight yet. So, Let's see which side was it again? We took it off this side, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't help it. All right, it looks dead center. That's a good sign. We'll see how we did. So, no play, but it's going to be, yeah. But that's how it was. So, you know, could just be how the knife is, which is fine. Still got that, which is awesome. Still got that, yes. So these bearings are gonna break in, obviously. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, okay. No play, no rock, nothing. Okay, I am happy. Now I just gotta figure out a way to do this without fucking stripping anything, because I just struggle over here. 
All right. So I need to mark the pivot. So I need to figure out the best location first. Um, if I need to, if I can walk back a little bit, get more action, but not lose play, we're gonna we're gonna see. So I loosened it a touch. Still no play. Still centered. So let's keep going. Touch more. Still look centered. No play. Starting to, I think it's a little, it's about the same, I think. It just doesn't swing down, right? Um, and I, I might not get there, and that's okay. There's a little bit looser. Still centered to me. Ooh. I mean, I wouldn't call that play, no. Oh, that might be the sweet spot right there. Oh, shit. Shit. Okay. So, just check. Mm, I wouldn't call that play, no. All right, so here's the deal. Because I'm going to be a stupid. I'm going to be a stupid. Um, and I'm going to glue this. So, we're going to go right here. This is how I do it. I mark it with a Sharpie. And then I will take it out carefully. And this is where you got to be smart. I think for most people, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you use purple Loctite. That's what Ben's recommending because this is a <clears throat> tiny screw, guys. This is not a normal size pivot. So blue Loctite, honestly, is probably too strong. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to be an idiot and use glue, but that's how I roll, folks. I roll like an idiot. So I'm going to take a little bit. If it pays off, it's a win. If it doesn't, it's bad. It's bad. All right, there we go. Then we're going to take the screw. Hopefully it'll stay on here. Take a dab there. And a dab there and go for it. Okay, now I'm looking to hit that Oh, shit. Didn't think of that. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Shit bubbles. Yeah, we got play, that's for sure. Can't fucking get this in tight enough. Jesus Christ. Come on, you bitch. Dude, that is frustrating. Um, I just can't get the grip I need on this fucking thing. This is how you strip the shit out of something, guys. So, stay fucking tuned. This is gonna be bad. Fuck. Fuck. What's happening? Oh, the whole thing is.
I think the whole thing is fucking spinning somehow. Even though I'm palming the shit out of this. I need something. It's just not. Uh, doesn't seem to be tightening. Okay. Okay. So, that's why you don't fuck around, folks. All right, let me, uh, the problem I had was it, it's, the glue started setting, and then it started spinning. It's a free spinning pivot, as we talked about, and I wasn't thinking. I thought I'd get it tight enough, quick enough, because I didn't have to worry about it when I was doing the test run, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean it, and then I'm probably just gonna use regular fucking Loctite like a fucking genius, and not risk ruining my whole knife. That's my plan right now. So first things first, this is acetone. I'm just dropping the screw in there. to melt the glue you can see it's melting the sharpie too or whatever come on lay down you bitch but, all right and then i need one of these so i can clean this out try to get any glue i kind of left in here uh this is ugly I t what did I say at the beginning of this video, though? Told you I would fuck something up. Luckily, I haven't done any damage yet. Um, very luckily, guys. Seriously. Um, yeah, I would not use glue on this one. Because you're just risking... I could have, you know, I could have essentially glued it shut and not been able to get it apart. And that... Would not be Ben's problem. You gotta remember that when you fuck with your knives, that um, it's not their problem if you fuck up the knife. That would be on me. So, anyway, I think we've escaped travesty here. I slipped out a couple times, but mostly just out of the screw. And I don't care about a few little, you know, whatevers. So I think we're good. So the screw is just sitting in acetone so that I can get the super glue off of it. It basically melts the glue. Just gonna carefully do this. All right, I think we're good. So now I'm going to test the tightness without any stupid ass glue in there, dummy. God damn it, always slip out of this thing. Okay, we're tight. Oh man, it's so good, it really is. I'm wondering if I can just leave it and see if it even needs Loctite. I think the skiffs um, do help. I mean, I'm able to get it to a tighter uh, tightness without play that still has um, very good smooth action. That's the benefit of having those extra balls in there, right? I love this knife, man. I was freaking out there for a second because I thought I fucked it up. I was like, shit, now I gotta buy another one. And honestly, I kind of do want to buy another one. Uh, this one obviously was sent for review. And, you know, when I like the model, I like to just buy one to support. So we'll see. I might do that. I just don't know what color I would get. 
Um, but yeah, man, that feels so good. I just don't want to have to let it sit in Loctite, but I also don't want to fuck the whole knife up like I almost just did by using glue again. I think if I just put a dab of glue on and then got it in there right away, it'd be fine. But, you know, I was dicking around. If you just got it on and then... Man, that screw really pisses me off. Man, it's so good. Okay, try this again. Is he dumb enough to go for two? I don't think it's going to hold, though. That's my thing. Because I'm going to be a little bitch about it this time. No play. <laughs> Centered. Fuck yes. The skiffs definitely took care of the centering. All right, I'm going to let this sit and hope it cures where it is. If not, I'll use blue Loctite. I'm just not going to risk using the amount of glue I normally do. That was dumb. I, I knew I was going to do something dumb, but we've escaped travesty, luckily. So... We can uh, we can put the emergency lines down. No big deal, guys. We're okay. Everything's okay. Clean the alcohol off or the sharpie. I'm not gonna open it. Well, I'm not gonna flick it open again. I'll show you guys the blade again. I gotta get rid of this. Hold on. Actually, I'm gonna put that over here and clean it properly. I'm not gonna pour it in my trash can. Looks like I need to glue this too. Um, how can I do that? Just use a bit, right? Just put it in there like this. Well. Try that. Take a little glue, get it down in the hole down here. I actually have good glue for this, but good glue. Um, I have glue specifically for like magnets for fidgets and shit. So I'm just gonna take this, push it down, hope it goes in there. There. And then let that sit. Hopefully the glue didn't get on the bit. <laughs> See if I can. Pull the bit out at least. No, it's not gonna work. Oh wait, yeah, it's good. So let that sit too. All right, let's talk one last time about this knife before I am done, and you guys can go fucking breathe and leave comments making fun of me. Um, I'm gonna put the. Uh, bearings in here i'm gonna put that in the box because i i want to keep that but yeah i mean all said and done that wasn't bad um and i think it's worth it i do personally um but as you can see i'm a i'm a well-trained disassembler uh, i have a lot of experience i'm not gonna say i'm an expert or anything i have a lot of experience and i struggled um it, it's just the tooling on the screws you just need to be careful but I don't think I did any damage. You can see here, that's the uh, show side. And then there's the other side. We just slipped out a couple of times, no big deal. What I think is that because they have that extra little ring there, you see that little ring where the star is? If instead of having that, it was just tooled all the way through that and didn't have that cool little ring there, it would probably, um, the tooling would be a little deeper. It'd be nice. I don't know how you do it on these, but um, you can see 
they get a little frayed on the edges there because you just tend to slip out of them. I think I have some extras, so no big deal. This one I slipped out of too when I was trying to check if the insert was tightened down. Um, but anyway, dead nuts with the skips. Beautiful 80s, or sorry, 80s, a purple haze, fat carbon. Love the milled clip. Um, yeah, guys, I am thoroughly impressed with this knife. So it it's so funny that even a locking knife, I'm going to sit here and rave about it. Man, it's so smooth on those skiffs. And having that little bit of uh, KPL heavy on the detent track and everything, I just make sure to clean the uh, tang here every once in a while because anything you put on the detent ball will transfer over. But this is like... I mean, it's super smooth. Before it was a bit gritty. Now it's like, I mean, you can still hear it, but it's not nearly as loud. And that's just going to get even better. I can smell it. Oh, I love that smell. And listen to that. Didn't lose any of that. Lock up. Still fantastic with the skiffs. Didn't make it fatter or anything. Everything looks great, honestly. Um, no play. Dead centered. And then on the close, we'll see if... Look at that. Are you kidding me? So the skiffs do get, make it drop shut, apparently. Well, there. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, that, I would say, is an improvement. But not going to be for everybody. So I'm glad it did that. But it's not what I was looking for, honestly. So, all right. Let me know what you guys think. Sorry for the shenanigans. Um, I knew that was going to be an interesting one. In the end... It's a win, guys. A big, big win, I think. And uh, shout out to Ben. Thank you, brother. Love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.